Tom will do the $803 for a year. Comcast for the internet, $86.90. Bright Flowers, that was for Memorial Planter for Tina Plessie, $69.99. For a grand total of $12,882.96. And we just received our tax bills on here, what else did. The town has to pay the $3.76 for the ditch, white ditch. Oh, okay. They, we haven't had it for quite a few years. We packed it back onto our bills this year. So there's 93 parcels at $3.76. Which we will be paying, but it will be showing on here. But I would like to get your approval tonight so we can just go ahead and get it. How many parcels is it? 93. 93? And these are all owned by the town? Yep. They owned owned by the town. Some of them the county gave us, some of them were purchased. And, uh, and some of them were the grants, and some of them were donated. At one time, the town did a blank uh, canvas of the property that was on the white dish bank area, and asked them if they wanted to donate and they got a few parcels from them, too. Okay, just I'm just curious. There's no private stuff in there. This is all town property. Okay. Well, uh, so about half of them were parked. The properties or the what do you mean a park? You mean the park owns them? No matter if the park owns them or not, they're still town responsibility. But they're not all by the town per se, partly owned by the park. Some of them are listed as town Michigan insurers slash park department. So the town Michigan insurers is on every one of them. But the park department's not listed with Every, every one. But those lots are made to be park or all the parks. They were made to be kept for green space for, right. for now and in the future. Right. Yeah. There won't be anything that was built there. But the town still owns it. The town still owns the oh, yeah. park. Sure. Yeah. They the park or the town. Some of the deeds, as I explained, says a Tom Michigan Shores Dash Park Department. Those were purchased with the monies that we got from grants. Because it was specifically stated that that would be for the park department. Well, the park department is an agent of the town. Yes. Weren't some of the properties that were donated by people specifically donated? to the park, even though the town ultimately owned. I cannot swear to that because some of this was done long before I came here. Uh, do you sure want to come in and go through the 93? Yeah, we have one. Yeah, you can go through the 93 parcels. So come on in the office, I'll let you go through them. <coughs> but there's no private ones in there. No what? No private. We're paying for any private individuals. It's all um, I uh, move to approve the accounts payable to register for April 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Who made this motion? I did. Did you all make a motion that you are authorized? Uh, to pay the three dollars or whatever it is. Seventy-six cents. Which is less than three hundred dollars. Now it comes up to almost four hundred. So it's less than a hundred dollars. Hundred times three. So three hundred. Oh, I know what it is. It's three seventy-six per. Okay, well then it is. Yeah, three seventy-six. For installment, there's two installments, just like the regular taxes that we get. Okay. All right. That. Do we have a second for that? I thought we did. Yeah. 
Also, oh, the motion to pay the taxes. Oh, sorry. Instead of waiting until the end of the. I'll second that too. Okay. What vote? No in favor? Aye. Bob, do you have a report for us? March. Full dispatch calls with 118 or 31 walk ins. We drove 3,247 miles. We had 790 hours, 46 hours of overtime, 44 hours of training, 2 hours of support. Reserved with 16 hours. Traffic stops with two Michigan shores and two Richmond uh, locks. One ordinance violation, one alarm. We had a pretty bad domestic. Made an arrest for domestic matter in front of a truck pile, which was a felony. He also strangled her, which made it another felony. And he also kept her from calling the police, which made it a misdemeanor crime. And that's it for the one. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> Steve? We've had two permits issued since uh, last month's meeting. Over on Manawalk, they're doing a kitchen remodel. And one over on Burrage Road, they're doing some window replacement and some general paneling and interior stuff. That's it. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions for Steve? No? Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to go back to During the month of March, we spent 212 hours training, um, meetings, etc. cetera, fire calls, and medical calls. During the month, we had six fire calls. Um, three of them were on Shady Oak. Uh, one was on Hunt training. Um, and then uh, we had a brush fire on Shady Oak over here. And then we had a structure fire over on US 20 which our squad went out to, and the squad had to be towed back and towed to St. County, Indiana for a new transmission. The pump broke and took out the torque converter, so we just got it back tonight, so it's back to the world. Uh, we had one medical call up on Dune Ridge. I guess somebody fell up there. And then also our pancake breakfast was made there. Thank you, Barry. <coughs> Dolly, do you have anything to report? Um, yeah, we talked about doing um, this year we'd like to build a picnic area across from the tennis court there. So we talked about doing a lot of that. Get a little bit more money. Um, and they're talking about yoga classes and uh, maybe movies in the park and see if we figure it out. Oh, cool. That's good. Uh, yeah. Uh -oh. Great, thank you. I would like to add if I think everybody noticed some pretty flowers out there that was. Uh, Put into the ground by one of our park board members, right? Okay. We had it last year, We're coming up now. Great. Stop hiding my boots. <laughs> Don't even my hair. Hey, I love my wood in front. You know, it's, there's a lot of them this year. I don't know how we got there. I didn't blend. <laughs> Anything on the roads for us? Nothing on the no reports from the street commission or the street department. The, the, the ramp that you guys just signed for was hopefully the last thing we have to do before we get the community cross on the ramp. Okay. Right, the, the exact figures are in here. The roadway was 109,000 for what was quoted, and we're receiving from the grant to 85,000, so we're lucky. Thank you. Question. Okay. Could you tell the Commission of Michigan 
PC to relay Highway 20. The <laughs> same <laughs> 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 process. <laughs> that place is to the schedule. Gravel road. It's the schedule. For when? So back this summer. They're supposed to start on it soon. I just heard on it the other day. They're doing something on it. They're working on lightning and everything. Yeah. It's going to be Swan Lake. Down the road. Highway to in the town. That's right. Probably this summer. <laughs> this day off 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. Yeah, during the day. It's one lake and somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Rich, do you have anything to report on the plan commission? Yeah. We met last Tuesday. Uh, we finally approved the pre-approved Mark Rhymes folks. Folks? Yes. Uh, the house plans that we had to have adjusted because it didn't seem right since last month when we came in. Uh, so now we have to see to approve it. The other guy that Joan, uh, I think he came in to submit an application for a permit up over there, the house in the back of Sunset. That guy still hasn't shown up. Uh, that's two meetings in a row. See, do you have anything on that guy? I contacted the company that's doing the plumbing work. Um, she's going to get back to me, but I've been over there and I haven't caught anybody, but they're definitely doing more than just plumbing work in there. Oh, it's a huge project. You could do oh, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Is that our town or is it in Bill and Geek? I am assuming it's in our town. Are you talking about the Yeah. It's another Two thirty sunset. That's Bill and Geek. I was actually assist with Bill and Beach. Yes. The A frame. Yeah. Bill and Beach. Okay. Okay, so it's not an issue for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, that's fine. No. Yeah, it's very funny. Third thing we discussed was uh, our building permit that we got. Dinah added a couple things that we had talked about, including the swimming pool inspections, and then we changed the final inspection for plumbing, electric. I think you all have a copy of the new permit. And uh, Dinah did a great job doing this. Is it always going to be in red? If you want it, you we can leave part of it. The red, this was so that everybody could see today, you know, at our meeting, you know, the changes that were made. But maybe some parts we would like to have the red, but you know. Like on the last page where it yes. says no contract resigns, it does say it on the permit and they sign it, so I don't know why we can't get these people to take those signs. Anyway, the additions are there on the first page. Um, one of the things we want, because this came up with the house, Pat Margaret sold house, as a matter of fact, so when a, a owner sells their house and they have a permit, they don't just sit there and have a permit, they're going to have to reapply. But we put in a time limit of when they're supposed to start, and if they haven't started, it can happen. And on the third page of what we have, you see the added um, swimming pool inspections, and uh, number nine was added. And then the final inspection by the county uh, kind of sums up what we had had in the old permit, which was a final plumbing, a final electric, a final mechanical. But like I said on the fourth page, if you know. The word note at the bottom of the fourth page, it does say we do not allow the signs in the yard. They want to put it on the house, think it's okay. Well, you better be careful there because you're advocating that rule then. If you're allowing the sign, any sign anywhere. They got their equipment, they got trucks and vehicles and stuff, they're marked. And if you're just going to open a can of worms, you allow it. You allow that to happen. I thought we did it. Yes, didn't we? No. 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 Science is science. It's, no. And, uh, oh, it's fine. Well, I, I, I recall that reason that we had decided on the sort of maximum size of science uh, in the past. But I don't see why it works 
sign salt. That was a different deal altogether. This is why this would be a problem. Having them take your signs out and giving them a ticket because they signed the permit, the owner. Mr. Donnie. Because you always say you sign as to the animal individual. Well, for enforcement purposes, um, I'm I'm uh, I'm not sure. Well, I, I know that the concern that you've raised is, is not a concern. The bigger concern that I have is whether or not it comports to the, the newly passed sign ordinance. And if the newly passed sign ordinance um, allows temporary signs, then those, those uh, contract signs, if that's what the concern is, it seems to me would be permissible under that that current ordinance. I don't remember. Well, if that's true, we have a guy down here who's still got uh, advertising for over two years now, a tree service. Mm -hmm. This way on the ground. What was the other day when I went by there? It was been up for over two years. It was up yesterday. It was what? Up? It's up. Well, so I, know I wouldn't call it over two years. Okay, other things that we talked about um, or had talked about, Gary came in, the fire department is planning to put a very small addition on there for storage, mainly the chairs. And chairs, tables, do compressor. So he didn't ask for a permit, he just wanted to go to the then we're still trying to find out what's going on with the fence with the uh, stable owner, uh, Steve. What, was it a long time ago you were supposed to? Yeah. But then you were waiting for Mr. Gunning, I think. Yeah. Uh, it depends on which fence we're talking about. If you're talking about the fence on the north side of the property, um, then we can probably cite them. But I did ask for a description about, about perhaps getting photographs. Okay. Um, yeah. I, need, I need the approximate length as it runs east and west, and then north and south on each side. I'm not sure that it's, it's complete um, throughout the, the property that it's squared off, but uh, it, it generally appears that way. But we need a, a description of the distance that's, that's coverage, it, it, at least on the north side, east and west. As I've said before, this fence, pardon my geography, uh, on the south side of the property is, uh, is under the, the jurisdiction of the county. And uh, a couple county engineers ago, we had an offer from them uh, to have that county engineer uh, go before the county commissioners and have them order it to be taken taken down or set back. Um, insofar as the corner uh, section is within our jurisdiction, when it is taken down, it has to be moved back and set at a greater angle so that it doesn't obstruct the view from any driver that's exiting um, whether you regard this as a street or a parking lot. Um, it is a street. It, it is a street. I, I don't remember if it's a commercial road or exchange road or something like that. Did, 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 did we a long time ago tell the owner to move that fence? When was this? Quite a while back, right? No, they, they offered to direct that. I don't know that, that it, it ever was that was going to work. Um, so it seems to me that you could reasonably expect that if you approach the new county engineer, you might get the same result. Uh, you might not, given the, uh, the political changes that have occurred uh, over the years. But uh, the south end is, is not within our jurisdiction to do anything about. The north end is, and uh, we just need a we need a, an accurate, legitimate, and general description uh, to put that into an ordinance violation uh, citation. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Okay, and the last thing we discussed, the 3915 Brookside, which is the new house on the corner of Greenwald and Brookside, right? Mm -hmm. There is a shed that does not look like it's 10 feet, but it looks like it's less than 10 feet off the back setback. So Steve, you might, I know we, you had a boulder issue with these people before, but. So that was uh, our meeting, but um, Mr. Gunning, do you have to look over the Zoom permit, or can we go ahead and pass it, unless uh, oh, I have a condition? I would ask that you have the council approve it. Uh, and with regard to the, the statement about the signs, uh, make that subject to legal review. That's been on the permit for years, the part about the signs. That's not new. Just that why it's on the on the earlier permit. It's just over there. Well, we just we just yeah. changed. We had a replacement sign with it. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's just enacted. Mm -hmm. uh, so. As a general matter, it appears that it may not be congruent with that new new provision. Um, but I'm not going to go through that in meeting. I'll, uh, I'll do that later. But I, I would ask that, uh, that the balance be approved. Uh, the limitations of the effective date of the, the permit uh, may also be something that we want to put in a separate ordinance. Uh, but we can do that going forward so long as the council uh, has not votes to approve the form itself. And this is the building permit form? Yeah. Okay. Uh, correct. So, where, where's the shed at on that property? I don't know. I didn't know that. Okay. So, as the house is on the corner here, it is behind the house to the east. You know where they have that big stockade fence? So it's between the stockade fence and the house. Over right there. So Matt Bowen is the one who saw it and then Ray took a ride over there to check it out. Right. You know, the second time. First time he didn't even notice it, the second time I saw it. One, one question I have about the stables. Are the stables still owned by the same lady? As far as I know, I'll pick it up because we have not seen her around a lot. Uh, but she was ordered to do something about the fence. She was also uh, supposedly has given us some uh, uh, portion of uh, that little street yeah, next to us where they've got Chibo. 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 And uh, nothing has been done there. So the town never claimed it. They, they never <coughs> took the fence down. The fence was in the town would sit back. And, and it belonged to the town. And they never, they never touched it. <coughs> Why? Well, because we don't, uh, we don't want to make a big, a big, uh, we, we thought we had an agreement that they won't have. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not aware of any particular point. Okay, well, I'm going to make a motion that the town council accept this new, the changes on the building program. Application. Application. Okay. All those in favor? Second. Oh, second. I second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, 
I was president of BZ a long time ago. <laughs> we never met unless somebody required, uh, requested a variance. You know, if there's no request for variance, there's no reason for the BZ to meet. Right? Well, they may have they have their rules that are rules to go. They passed that a few years ago. Oh, I don't know. They can do what they want. Okay. Okay. The next on the agenda is White Ditch. Okay. Ms. Shannon is angry. This is not on the list for any kind of discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, nothing to place in the meeting with regards to Ms. Shannon Shores. Okay. So, that was good news. Thank you. Do you remember when they implemented? I know it's on there now. No, it does. Yeah, this year it's on there. I don't know. I didn't find out last year. Yeah, I don't remember anything or reading anything about it. Okay. It, it should be there for a while because we've had money in the bank, you know, that they use, you know, mm -hmm. every time they they go through here. So, but I don't know when they actually started taking it out. I'll ask that for C. Who did it? I put it Mr. Henry, do you have anything? No. No. Webmaster. 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 I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I update everyone with the dates and any kind of news this time. I did put in, I added the fire department's pancake, pancake breakfast on it. And then I also made note of cleanups and that if the town actually does the cleanup and if we publish a date, I don't know if anything was discussed there by anyone in encouraging everybody to. You know, pitch in and help on that, and then um, I think that's about it with regards to. I, I would be a subject uh, suggest. <laughs> I was going to suggest you had for a date of coming. Oh, a date? Okay. Because you know it's April, and usually we do the town cleanup in May. So, anybody wants to? Does anybody have a suggestion for a date? Not before we Well, I thought we discussed it last year, and we're not getting an officer, and we're just kind of ask the individuals. There's nowhere to, nothing to talk about, and if we do get it, we're not. Okay. Because we agreed not to get a dumpster again. Right. Okay. So you have to make arrangements if you're going to do that. We kept the old contract. Republic Services and in Republic Services there is a dumpster, but we had problems with everybody that went by it and construction people dumping their things in it. It's not what it was for. That's one of the yard okay. We decided not to go to dumpster again. Okay. And if people have large pickups, they can call and put this up in here now. They can call them. I, and I just wanted to add that if we do have a town cleanup, I said I'm more than willing to take a bag or two home and put it in my garage. I don't think that's going to hurt anybody. You know, so I think the rest of us can do that. Those which are off. Ask them to take the trash home and put it in their bags. Right. Good idea. Okay. Good idea. I was going to do that, but we just said it out there. Now, who, since my wife is no longer here, but she used to take care of the, the hot dog, you know. Oh, well, it's someone from the park department. Planning commission. No, I think we did. Yeah. We did it. Okay. I mean, Regina did it. No, she hasn't done it the last few, last few years. Oh, no, what she did. No, she was trying to do it. John was president, so I thought it was just oh, John was like like president. Oh, that could be because, um, but anybody might volunteer to uh, go for a dog. I've got a lot of things coming up, and they just said that came first. Yeah, you're too busy. Uh, huh? You're too busy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would suggest the uh, Saturday the 11th of May, if that's where you're going. Maybe you just put that in the next. Excuse me. That's the next thing we have to go to, the second. Love it. Oh, yeah. And that's Mother's Day weekend, that's not a good weekend. No. So the 18th? That's 
this out. Is everybody in favor of that? Everybody in favor of the Bay 18 for the town cleanup?
then you look at what's happening, and it may be routine, and you may say, fine, do it. It may be unusual, and it may be a circumstance where in the situation requires certain rules and considerations. For example, in this, this last situation, we probably want to protect the town by saying that you have permission to have that cable line under our road, so long as you sign a waiver that holds us harmless. So for example, somebody gets permission to put up a sign, or the, the uh, road commissioner or contractor is going to put up a sign, and they put that sign right through the cable line. Um, we want to make sure that they don't sue us in the future. And if it's our own building commissioner or uh, road commissioner who puts the sign in there and cuts off the sign, uh, we want to we want to be held harmless from that. Um, you're probably all familiar with the you know call the state service before you dig. <coughs> That's because they want to check and make sure that the lines, the utility lines in particular, that may spark a fire or an explosion or a problem, uh, like an outage, uh, are prevented. And so we want to take the same type of charge. Now that's the type of thing that, that we might just want to pass an ordinance and set forth what the procedure is, and that sort of alerts everybody and reminds everybody. <coughs> because I, I realize that that last AT&T request has been years ago now, and to my knowledge, that's the only one that's come before us. Uh, but I have that sort of activity uh, on, on a list. I know the conservative municipal law philosophy is fewer regulations and a shorter, smaller rule book or ordinance book is, is better. Uh, and so one line of thought is, you know, don't put all these things into a special ordinance. Um, but then that requires us to be mindful of that uh, in the future. It's very easy to have the situation that, that recently occurred, uh, you know, go forward without any realization that that is a right and that is an obligation by the council then uh, to actually police that. If I can report other things than you now, then you don't have to talk about later. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if the agenda uh, has been listed later. Uh, but I did want to report in the uh, ordinance violation case for the uh, citation issue at 402 L Portal. Uh, that has now been rescheduled. It's not rescheduled for a trial. It's merely rescheduled for a status hearing for May 13th at 1 o'clock. That, of course, is the Room 4 case out of Michigan City um, Court Building. The, the other item that I definitely wanted to report on was, uh, you're probably all aware of the uh, United States Supreme Court declining to take the Gunderson case that involved the uh, Lakeshore rights about walking along the, the Lakeshore. Um, with that action, um, that means that the state Supreme Court decision that protects the rights of individuals uh, to use that lakefront, uh, beachfront property uh, to walk along with a, a, a walking easement, so to speak, and uh, perchance to even uh, sit down along the way. Um, by doing that, they caused the General Assembly to say, oh, we should have a law like most of the other states have. Um, what has happened with most other states is that their origins and their reasons for having the law is different from ours because of the way the ownership of the property exists. And the land in Lake Michigan is owned by the state in state jurisdiction. In the other states, for example, in Illinois, uh, their land ownership 
is conditioned upon license and patents and other land rights that were given away to the counties or the cities or to individual land owners. So what other states like Illinois have done is they said, uh, we're going to pass a statewide law that says we have a public trust for the use of those lands. And we're going to have a list in our legislation that says what's allowed. And most states, like Illinois, just say recreational use. Michigan has a little bit of a different uh, history, but they have the same type of a public trust in place. Except there was a lawsuit, much like the, the Gunderson case, but the, uh, the party involved there that wanted the use of the, the lakefront property was just to walk along the lake. So when the litigation was over, the state of Michigan has interpreted that all as meaning that every member of the public has that right to walk along the lakefront without fear of being told that they're trespassing or being chased off the land um, by the owner of the property up to that, that point. If you can remember, the State Department of Natural Resources said, um, we measure that line by high water mark. And they even have markers planted in the ground in various places along the the Indiana shoreline that tells you where that high water mark is. But in fact, the high water mark is always moving uh, with, with the drift of, of the, the waves, uh, like a tide, but not like a, a tide. So with the opportunity that exists with the General Assembly saying, we should take and pass a law to govern this, there are two competing laws that have come to the fore. Uh, one is uh, the subject of a letter that was just written by the mayor of Michigan City, saying we're opposed to that version, that's Senate Bill 581. In Senate Bill 581, it says we're going to declare there's a Lake Michigan shoreline zone, and we're going to give authority for that to the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. And they shall govern it, and they shall not allow uh, cities and towns and counties that have uh, sure prote protection structures, whether it be steel sea walls or riprap, uh, they're not going to allow municipalities to have any type of uh, jurisdiction over that. So the mayor indicated that that was one of his objections to that particular law, Senate Bill 581, that gives the power and the control to the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. The other proposal is Senate Bill 553, and that has been introduced by uh, State Senator Karen Callion from Ogden Dunes. That is typical of what they have in Michigan and Illinois and, and the other states, whether it's ocean shorefront or Great Lakes shorefront, um, in that it declares a recreational use, but it does not give the authority and the administration for the shoreline to the Department of Natural Resources. They would have some obligation, clearly, to enforce that law but they don't have control and authority over it, as in Senate Bill 581. Um, my understanding is there's only two weeks left in the meeting of this General Assembly, and uh, both bills have been passed fully through the Senate and uh, are hung up in the House, but both have been assigned to the House Committee on the Judiciary, but they have not had any hearings yet uh, beyond the first reading, which is just a formal reading to put it on the calendar. Um, so my question was going to be, if this town council 
is inclined to let the state legislature know they favor one over the other, or they perhaps oppose both of those uh, proposed bills, that, uh, that you might want to take action tonight to express uh, an opinion that they should pass one or the other, uh, or maybe take no action, or express an opinion that they shouldn't adopt either of them. If they don't adopt either, I would expect that both versions or some form are going to be back in, in the next session of the, the General Assembly. Um, but I think I would perhaps uh, urge that if you're going to take a stance, that you would ask the state legislature to back, pass uh, the Karen Italian version, the Senate Bill 553, which would just announce that general recreational use. Because the, the issue is set as to uh, the use of that land, um, whether it has lake water on it or not, um, that is regarded now by the court decision as being part of the trust. So I offer that information, and uh, if someone wants to make a motion that favors one over the other, fine. If you, if you don't want to do anything on it, that's, that's fine as well. Um, the, the last thing that I wanted to, to mention, um, and I don't, I have to rely on the treasurer for this. Um, you had, I think, another uh, UMBA contract that was either pending or may have been approved. No, it's not um, been approved. I sent it to you so you can read it from the Okay. I, I don't recall that I've gotten a new one, but they, they in fact, use a standard boilerplate uh, contract every time. Um, the last time we had a State Board of Accounts audit report, there were some adversary findings in the, uh, the report, and we've addressed many of those, although we haven't addressed all standard State Board of Accounts audit reports has a section for all cities, towns, counties, and political subdivisions um, with regard to risk control. And uh, it basically says the town council is responsible for risk control, and so every one of your actions that you want to take, you must consider uh, the risk that's, that's involved. One of the unique features, in my opinion, about the Humba Agreement is it has a whole harmless clause that basically says if the court treasurer or the town council goes off the reservation and starts violating laws uh, or starts uh, taking money and they don't catch it, uh, they're absolved from any uh, liability for that or if they catch it two years later, or a year down the road, or five years down the road. Um, their specific contract language has a whole harmless uh, expression in it, so that the town will hold them harmless. So if the state says, hey, you should have known, uh, they hold up the contract and deflect it back to us. One of the risk control acts that the town council can take uh, every time um, or somebody else presents a contract like that to you is uh, one of the few things you can do is take out an insurance policy. Um, in this type of uh, instance, um, you would be taking out an insurance policy for the actions of the treasurer. Um, we've seen in the past where the town has taken out an insurance policy on the activities of the town attorney and on general liability itself. Now, you have insurance coverage uh, that speaks to wrongdoing um, and errors and omissions. Uh, but 
we years ago had uh, a very expensive uh, policy that also was referred to as the linebacker. It had linebacker uh, coverage. So that if the town was sued, whether with the fault of the attorney or with or without the fault of uh, a building commissioner or any other employee, uh, it would provide coverage up to the limits. But with a linebacker uh, coverage, it would also provide protection, even if there's outright wrongdoing involved. Um, and the last time we had coverage like that was uh, for the cell tower lawsuit. And that law firm paid all the legal expenses in that particular instance. Uh, after that, uh, they said, we won't even offer that until you've had a period of three years without similar uh, litigation against you. Um, so either way, those types of insurance policies are the types of, of protection that are available to you. Now I recall that when the three-year time period was up, um, we looked at uh, linebacker coverage again, and the premiums were so sky high, um, you know, there was a comment to the effect of, well, we won't be able to pay the roads for the next 20 years uh, if we get into, into that type of uh, coverage. And so it would be the same with uh, risk control on a policy like that for the court treasurer, even though it's more of a, a limited uh, coverage. So whenever you make a decision not to have coverage like that, uh, one can refer to it as you're rolling the dice, and in a sense you're always rolling the dice with every decision that you make. Um, but it would seem to me that this year, uh, like the last many, many years, um, I would not encourage you to um, to seek out a, a separate uh, policy of insurance uh, on the errors and omissions of the clerk treasurer or on the intentional wrongdoing of the clerk treasurer. Uh, so we're putting a lot of faith in, into you, uh, which, which we are anyway un unspoken. Uh, but we go a few steps further to protect ourselves yes. by having this conversation, I realize it's been a monologue so far, uh, about this particular uh, topic. But theoretically, that finds its way into the meeting minutes that the attorney talked about risk control and the town possibly seeking out an insurance policy separate to uh, protect the town in the event that the whole harmless in the UMPA contract is triggered. Um, so, so that's my, my comment. I'll conclude by saying if there's any discussion on supporting the uh, Lakeshore legislation, uh, I'll take questions on that. Uh, and if you're not interested, that's okay too, whatever the body decides. Well, I have a question about up. <coughs> the on the no harm clause, we just signed a contract with them recently and they got a considerable amount of industries. They're not going to be responsible for what we did to them to submit that to state. That's their, their standard contract, I think. Uh, my questions with them are the, the first time any municipal attorney anywhere in the state has raised the question. Yes. I just very quickly I want to introduce the new officer that we have, Mitchell Snipes. He's been with us for a couple of months now. Todd Bullis is replaced him. He retired after four years. He's too young.
The, the contract is in the, uh, the form of a take it or leave it uh, contract. So you can, you can take it or leave it. Uh, it's standard in all our grant contracts, all the federal contracts um, that, uh, that we end up you know, identifying and holding harm, harmless those other entities and agencies. Um, but the state uh, says, you know, all, all you can do would be to, um, you know, seek out a special coverage insurance policy, um, and that's really your only option. So let's stick to my explanation. Are you done? I am. <laughs> I, wait, I have one other thing I want to ask you about. The, the building program and the, and the uh, bonding of the uh, subcontractors, our responsibility to check for homeland security, but I'm not sure. The illegal aliens and stuff? Uh, oh, uh, the E-Verify, that's for uh, contractors that okay. provide services to All right. the town. We're going to, when we initiate the program here, to start checking those people, the county has to be, to do that for us because we're already registered with the county. That's, if we have to do it ourselves, we're talking about a considerable amount more work and time involved, which we would be hard to call. Those are people who have contracts with the town. So if we hire somebody to clear the road right away or do paving, you know, our, our standard specs for road paving specifically refer to the, the E-Verify. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure that when the contractor either finishes the job or starts the job, that they come in and, and they put a uh, E-Verify certification in our class. Well, I misunderstood. I thought we were talking about the subcontractors that build houses or work on houses. No, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Contracts. We will have. So, okay, I misunderstood this, so I'm going to clear it up. Okay. I was going to add the same. I think, I think the street paving is probably the best example of that. What, the water? What about utilities, gas, electric? That's basically the Yeah, yeah, that, that, okay. That's fine. Okay. So, what's next? Well, wait a minute. In regard to the V-Tracks, the bill that the mayor of Michigan City is against, is that something you're suggesting we back? You're saying uh, you, could, you could oppose that bill just as, he, as the mayor has opposed? Um, and we could either. And what was the other one? The other, the other one is Senate Bill 553, and that uh, designates recreational uses uh, that would just continue uh, to recognize the, the present use. And that is that uh, people can walk along the beach. People can walk along the beach without the owner of the. the we did have an issue in our town. We direct a couple years ago in the Clintons. Uh, I was that happened to be down at the beach shop when the slaughter went crazy. Now, went crazy with people down there. And uh, it, it could have gotten ugly. I don't remember if Bob was called or what, but if, I'm willing to back that second, you know, suggest that we just vote to the, the state support that second. Is there a bill number on that? Right, right. That, that would be uh, Karen Cowden's bill and then Senate Bill 553. So you're making a motion? Well, is that any guys of the opinion that we I'd like to fight by the way it is right now? Well, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay, this is what she needs to say. I'll second it. Are you making a motion? Huh? I guess I made the motion. Right. 
You're making so, that. So clarity, clarity. Is, is that to oppose Senate Bill 581 and support Senate Bill 553? Yes. Or just yes. one or the other? Yeah. 553. Yeah. It's from the the way that the attorneys handle yeah. both of that two want to go. She's got to understand what she's going to write. Okay, up. so I move that we uh, vote in favor of supporting 553 as opposed to 580. Okay. That's all I second in the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Who's your names? What do we do about the rocks in our way to the beach now? Are there anything down there lately? Yeah, it's terrible. No, I mean, are the rocks still there? Oh, they are definitely there. I got called. You can't walk past that house now because there's rocks in the way. I had a call from Mrs. O'Brien and she said they had hope. They were going to get them out of there by May 1st. Especially the rocks that are on uh, our beach area. Well, our his, beach area. His footing is out of the water by 12 foot now. So if it keeps eroding, his house will be in the water. Well, his footings are that far off now. That's his problem. That's not yep. He has the right to take the ground beach. Right. And there's no way to get to the beach. They're supposed to be doing some kind of uh, erosion control on that house for the summer. But the way the property line sits on there, the, the, stuff, the boulders have rolled onto the public side of the property. They're, they're, they're getting undermined and rolling on the public property. It's not the little boulders that you were talking about. These are the big Volkswagen boulders. And that's where maybe as the town council should write to the Council of Michigan Michigan that they're expected not these boulders not to be on the public right which they are they before they do anything to the beach they're supposed to get a permit from the EQ. So the EQ doesn't even work in any equipment down there. If you want to do anything, they want you to hand dig this stuff out. They're going to have big equipment. They're bringing no, barges. They will have to. Well, this now that they've done it, but I don't think they have a permit to do that. I think they just want to have you did it. Well, that's why we have to get more oversight right. on, on that there because those. I mean, the, the beach is only 40 foot wide-ish, and you throw a boat right inside the boulder. That's 10 mm -hmm. foot right there, so you have four people who got 30 foot. Oh, I agree with you. I think we need to do something. In fact, I'm going to be in my public comments. Oh, so These are the same people that wouldn't even let you walk on the beach in front of their place before they even had a house built. And now we're going to over some of our beach roads. Well, they want to build out as far as they can to keep everybody from coming out of it. They want to build out. Yeah, it's a shame that the uh, long, long ago that the, the beach was actually a parcel of duff by whoever uh, you know, established the long beach and uh, human beach. So, as long as we're talking about the beach right there, I did talk to Rick uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, and uh, our beach shop is their number one plan, but with the, no beach, I don't know if they're going to go through. They still have on the agenda to replace the stop as all alike from all the other ones. And that's going to go through. They can't purchase aluminum stairs to trap stairs just to get down to that they will be putting in at 37, 38, and 39. So that's they they are already in shipment now is out of the door. Okay. 
Any more comments? No? What were the world? I have comments. Okay. The world. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Second We're at the grant side. Oh, all right. Go ahead. Okay, so white fish, uh, Bay State Relation. Uh, Al Wallace is working on the DNR and the RFP proposal. There is an RFP or RET, which is a request for a proposal that's been completed and it's in the works. And we'll be getting three. White ditch repair and vertical restoration. So it shouldn't be too long before we know exactly what, what has to be done and the next grant what we want on for grant to actually do the work. Um, you want to meet in the evening or in the afternoon? Uh, 
That's on private property. It's over 10 foot off the road. It's our property. It's village property. And now it's over property. 10 foot off the road. And my suggestion, we've got because if you haven't seen that, you need to take a look. Because it wasn't done very good. I know you've seen it. Well, the whole council is pretty much in the mess because we really want to get out of this. We're trying to get some kind of program going this, here so we can start cleaning this up. This was paid to be done. Well, you misunderstood because I'll tell you, all those paid and guns cut the trees down and haul them out of here. They get all those big stumps out. They didn't only cut trees. And I also said we need to spell it out. I want to have a workshop so we can sit down and discuss it. You take care of it on the trade ship. Before you come to the workshop, can I make a suggestion that we all write down what you think needs to be done? Each one of you have a list of what you think needs to be done. Right. That yeah. way that you can compare your notes and right. come to some conclusion of what you want to be put on. Request for a proposal. Okay. Right now, to the insurance, you verify all this other stuff. It's yeah. an unfortunate word, and then get that what in the writing exactly what has to be done, and then it's done. Uh, if it's not done, they did it wrong. And they don't get paid. Correct. You've got something to go by. I have one last thing before you adjourn um, in the comments that for communications. I have a card, thank you card, that came from um, Richard Pusky's daughter, uh, Amy. She sent it on behalf of the Pusky family. Um, their gratitude for the expression of sympathy and all the flowers. Okay, does anybody else have anything else to add? So, nothing? Well then, meeting adjourned. Thank you for coming.